Unit 6, Lesson 18, More Relationships. Number 1. Elena is designing a logo in the shape of a parallelogram. She wants the logo to have an area of 12 square inches. She draws bases of different lengths and tries to compute the height for each. A. Write an equation Elena can use to find the height, h, for the value of the base, b. Well, the area equals base times height, and they gave us the area, which is 12. So to find the area, you'd have to multiply base times height. But if you needed to find the value for the height, you would divide the area by the base, or 12 by b. So the equation that Elena can use would be 12 over b equals h. B. Use your equation to find the height of a parallelogram with base 1 and 5 tenths inches. So the area divided by the base will give us the height. So 12 divided by 1 and 5 tenths will equal the height. And 12 divided by 1 and 5 tenths is 8. So the height is 8 inches. Number 2. Han is planning to ride his bike 24 miles. A. If he rides at a rate of 3 miles per hour, how long will it take? So the 24 miles that he rides divided by 3 miles per hour will equal 8 hours. It will take Han 8 hours to ride his bike 24 miles if he travels at a constant rate of 3 miles per hour. How long will it take at 4 miles per hour? 24 miles divided by 4 miles per hour, that will equal 6 hours. It'll take Han 6 hours to ride his bike 24 miles if he travels at the constant rate of 4 miles per hour. At 6 miles per hour, 24 miles that he rides his bike divided by 6 miles per hour will equal 4 hours. So it will take Han 4 hours to ride his bike 24 miles if he travels at the constant rate of 6 miles per hour. B. Write an equation that Han can use to find t, the time it will take to ride 24 miles, if his rate in miles per hour is represented by r. So in this case it would be 24 miles divided by r because r represents the rate in miles and that will equal the time. So 24 divided by r equals t. C. On graph paper, draw a graph that shows t in terms of r for a 24 mile ride. Across the horizontal axis on the bottom, I put the rate in miles per hour. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that represents the r axis. On the left side, the vertical axis, I have the time in hours represented, 1 through 14, and that's the t axis. The horizontal axis at the bottom, r, that's the first coordinate. So if the first coordinate reads 2, I would start at 0 and then move to the right two places, or two units. And then the second coordinate, that would be the vertical axis, or time. And if the time was 12 hours, I would count up 12 spaces, or 12 units. I highlighted this in yellow, from the 2 up to the point in yellow to represent the 12 hours of time. And then from the 12 to the red point that goes horizontally, that covers a span of 2 units. That represents the rate, or miles per hour. So if the coordinates were 2 and 12, I would start at the 0 on the bottom left hand corner and I would count 2 units to the right and then I would count 12 units straight up and that's where I would put my point. And this point would represent traveling at 2 miles an hour, it would take 12 hours to travel 24 miles. Press pause and then take a moment to put the points in for the rest of the coordinates. Number 3. The graph of the equation v equals 10 s to the third power contains the points 2 and 80 and 4 and 640. A. Create a story that represents this graph. The story I came up with is Jan has 10 cubes, each with edge lengths of 2 units. John has 10 cubes, 
each with edge lengths of four units. Graph the volume of all the cubes for each person. I think this story makes sense because the first set of coordinates is 2 and 80. And I know that 2 could represent the S. And S to the third power, in this case, would mean 2 to the third power, or 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then 10 times S to the third power would mean 10 times 2 to the third power. And since 2 to the third power equals 8, 10 times 8 would be 80. That's how we would get the first set of coordinates. The second set of coordinates are 4 and 640. So in this case, for the second set of coordinates, the S would equal 4. And 4 to the third power would be 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. So V equals 10 times S to the third power would really be V equals 10 times 64. And 10 times 64 is 640. So that's how we get the second set of coordinates. B. What do the points mean in the context of your story? Each point represents the total volume of all 10 cubes for each person. For example, the volume of one cube with edge lengths of 2 is 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. So the volume of one cube would be 8. The points for the graph are 2 for the edge length and 8 for the volume. So the coordinates would be 2 and 8. Number 4. You find a brass bottle that looks really old. When you rub some of the dirt off the bottle, a genie appears. The genie offers you a reward. You must choose one. $50,000 or a magical dollar coin. The coin will turn into two coins on the first day. The two coins will turn into four coins on the second day. The four coins will double to eight coins on the third day. The genie explains the doubling will continue for 28 days. A. Write an equation that shows the number of coins n in terms of the day d. The number of coins equals 2 to the power of number of days, or n equals 2 to the power of d. B. Create a table that shows the number of coins for each day for the first 15 days. On the left hand side of the table, I have days, and I started with 1, and I just added a day each time until I got 15 days. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on until 15. In the column of the right hand side of the table, I have the number of coins. I started with 2 coins, and I doubled it each time for the first 15 days. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, all the way until the 15th day was 32,768. It's at this point that I realized that I would pick the option where the dollar coin doubles itself each day for 28 days. Because the 15th day is over $32,000. That means that on the 16th day, the value is going to be over $64,000. And that's only after the 16th day. We get to keep doubling it all the way through 28 days. C. Create a graph for days 7 through 12 that shows how the number of coins grow with each day. On this graph, I have the horizontal axis across the bottom representing the number of days, and the vertical axis on the left represents the number of coins. It was kind of tricky to figure out how to represent the number of coins on that vertical axis because we had a limited amount of space. Initially, I skipped every two units and I counted by 500, 500, 1,000, 1,500, and so on, till I got to 4,500. And then I went back in and I filled that extra space with a value that was 250 more than the previous one. For example, the first one, 0 plus 250 is 250, so that first line would be worth 250. Then 500 plus 250 is 750. Then 1,000 plus 250 is 1,250, all the way until the last one where I had 4,500 plus 250 represented 4,750. And then I went back in and I put in the points. That was kind of tricky too. The first point, seven days. Seven days was worth 128 coins. Half of 250 is 125. So I had to put that point somewhere to represent 128, which would have been just about halfway between 0 and 250. 
So the coordinates for day 7 would have been 7 and 128. You can find this on the table that you already made. Now look at day 8. The coordinates for day 8 would be 8 and 256. Go back and look at that table again and the coordinates for day 9 would be 512. The coordinates for day 10 would be 1024 and so forth. Press pause and complete the rest of the points. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 6, Lesson 18, More Relationships. Right now you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. That sure beats the price you'd pay for a tutor.